Hey, what's going on guys? What's happening? YouTube, you guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. In today's video, we're going to be talking about uh, this article from Zero Hedge. Meet the only ETF in the US that owns Bitcoin. And this ETF uh, actually owns Bitcoin in two different ways. It's ARCW, uh, run by Kathy Wood. This ETF has seen some phenomenal gains in the past couple months, and especially in uh, 2020. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I also, you know, there's a number of kind of concepts, thoughts, shower thoughts, ideas, things I kind of wanted to pick your guys' brain about uh, in terms of like investing, the housing market, etc. Um, that maybe aren't necessarily worth making a video or long enough to make a, a full-length video about in and of themselves. But I, I thought it's some stuff that we could talk about uh, in part of the lead-in to today's video. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Um, if you guys are investors or if you're looking to get into investing, I got an affiliate link down in the description box below. You can get yourself four free stocks from Webull, each stock valued at, uh, I think it's somewhere between $2 and $1,600. Um, and uh, you basically get, if you sign up for a Webull account, which you can do, th do so uh, through my affiliate link down below, you will get two free stocks for doing absolutely nothing. You don't have to spend a penny, you don't have to deposit any money, and you'll get two free stocks, again, valued at upwards of $1,600. Um, and then if you decide you like the, the interface or you want to use Webull, uh, when you deposit your first $100, you'll get another two free stocks. So you potentially get four free stocks. Uh, I'll drop that link down below. Uh, as far as what I wanted to talk about in today's video, um, so we're going to be talking about the only ETF in the U.S. that owns Bitcoin. Let's talk a little bit about Dogecoin. Um, and maybe some of you guys can answer this for me. My, my buddy Brian Phobos, uh, check him out. Go subscribe to his channel, Brian Phobos, on YouTube. He's also on all the kind of alternative social media platforms. What is it, like Hive, Mind, Steemit, all that type of stuff. Uh, really smart guy when it comes to crypto. He doesn't put out as much content a as he used to, but I think he kind of spreads himself between a lot of these different platforms. Uh, I think he put out a video earlier today, and maybe I'll, I'll drop a link to his down below as well. Uh, I think he was predicting a 28 cent, uh, 25, 28 cent Dogecoin. Uh, I know Elon Musk was tweeting more about Dogecoin the other day. Dogecoin's a really funny one. And you know, honestly, just, you know, I've been in crypto since probably going back to 2013. Dogecoin was one of the earlier coins. And you know, nowadays, I mean, there's literally hundreds, if not even thousands of coins. But back in the day, you didn't have nearly as many coins. So Dogecoin was that much more, you know, if you were in the space back in 2012, 2013, 2014, uh, there were much less coins to focus on. So Dogecoin was much more, you know, notable or, or much easier to kind of notice. Uh, I never really took Dogecoin seriously because it was created as kind of a joke. And, I, and I'm sure I've held some Dogecoin or traded some Dogecoin a little bit over the years and uh, I remember way back this is probably like 2013 being on an exchange called CryptoRush.in which ultimately was either hacked or didn't exit scam um, but I remember one of the earlier altcoins I, I was involved in and invested in I, I could have sworn it was a coin called Lightning Coin and you know obviously this is going many years back 20 what 2013 to 2020 is what seven years we're in 21 so this was what, eight years ago so it's kind of hard for me to remember but I could have sworn that there was a coin called lightning coin now when I search on Google I can't find any record of a lightning coin ever having existed uh, so let me know let me know if any of you you guys who've been in the game for a long time remember a coin called lightning coin and I kind of remember the backstory behind lightning coin being that the Jamaican bobsled team didn't have enough money to compete uh, so they wound up raising money uh, via this lightning coin in order to go to the Olympics. Now, when I Google it, uh, the stories that come up actually have to do with Dogecoin. So let me know, at one point, was Dogecoin's logo a lightning bolt instead of a dog? Yeah, if anybody remembers, let me know. Otherwise, let me know if you remember a coin called lightning coin. Because I, I, you know, I'm 99.9% .9 sure I remember like one of the earlier altcoins I messed with being Lightning Coin, but maybe it was Dogecoin, uh, and I just don't don't remember for some reason. I'm putting a different name to it. Uh, so let me know about that. But uh, yeah, Dogecoin. There's not a whole lot of reason where Do why Dogecoin should be at the price it's at now, or why it should continue to go any higher. But honestly, nothing in terms of the market makes sense right now, right? Like the the stock market is completely disconnected from reality. Uh, a lot of people are saying the housing market is overinflated. The housing market's in a bubble. The housing market's disconnected from reality. And, and I agree with that and I disagree with it. I agree with it to the extent that housing prices have been steadily rising for a number of years and wages haven't really been rising. Uh, so, you know, eventually it's going to kind of get to the point where unless millennials and Gen Zers' parents start dying off and they start inheriting money or inheriting houses, you know, it's going to get to the point where people just don't have the wages 
to keep up with the housing prices unless they start doing like 50 year loans or 60 year loans or something like that. But uh, housing is already incredibly expensive. I hear a lot of uh, millennials and Gen Zers saying the same thing. I can't afford a house, I'm priced out. Um, and I think part of that is that people want their dream house right away, right? People don't necessarily want to do the whole starter house thing. They, they want the HGTV house right away. Uh, but I also do think that housing is somewhat unaffordable and you know, housing is rising, you know, shit man, this year in, in some hot cities, it's up 25%. Um, and you know, she was probably like nine years ago. My, my folks moved down to South Carolina. I thought about buying a place down there, didn't wind up doing it. And, uh, was kicking myself because I saw prices down there like triple in value. Uh, but wages definitely aren't keeping up with housing prices. And I think we're going to get to a point where even with loans, people just aren't going to be able to afford houses just because their salaries can't the, most people's salaries can't justify housing prices continuing to appreciate because salaries aren't appreciating nearly as quickly or as much as the housing market. So in that sense, I do think housing is kind of, kind of overvalued or I don't think it's sustainable to continue rising at the pace it's been rising. However, at the same time, I mean, right now it's an issue of supply and demand. I know earlier on during COVID, people weren't working because people were uh, unsure about their job security and things like that. But uh you know, I, I feel like most people, I feel like the terror and, and most people being terrified of COVID has kind of passed. I kind of get people maybe not wanting strangers in their home too. I know that was kind of part of it earlier on. Uh, I would expect that, you know, if people were thinking about moving or are thinking about moving, you know, things have kind of lightened up to the point that people may start considering that again. But I think the reason housing prices are going so crazy right now is just because there's just really not that many houses to buy. I've been looking for a house down in the Tampa St. Pete slash Gulfport slash even now expanding to like Sarasota area for pretty much the past year. I think it was last January I went down there actually looking at houses, um, have been beat out on a couple houses and uh, just right now, I mean, I can go a whole week and there's not even one house that uh, that hits the market that fits my criteria. And whereas, you know, a year, year and a half ago, I was seeing dozens of houses every day hitting the market. I mean, for the past six months, for the past year, uh, you know, there might be one or two no new houses that, that hit the market. And that's not even to say that those, uh, you know, are the size I'm looking for, numbers of bedrooms and bathrooms in an area I want uh, in a condition that I would want to buy a house. Uh, so yeah, just very little inventory. So I don't think the housing market is that far out of whack. Uh, just kind of another kind of random thought. I actually thought, you know, it's amazing how quickly the news cycle works. Um, you know, the other week, the whole Robin Hood Wall Street bets thing was like the biggest news around. Now that's kind of been forgotten about. Kind of an idea or shower thought, for lack of a better word, that I had the other week was... Uh, you know, I think we've all known that the stock market is manipulated, metals markets are, commodities markets are manipulated. Uh, JP Morgan paid almost a billion dollar fine for manipulating the silver market, uh, but it was worth it to do it, right? Because the, the fine winds up being much less than they actually made off of it. So if you can do wrong, but you still wind up making more money than you ultimately wind up getting fined, it makes sense to continue to do more wrong. Uh, I played the clip for you guys the other week of Kramer from CNBC. Uh, talking about how he manipulates uh, manipulates the market. And so I don't think it's a secret that the market's manipulated. I think we all know we're, we're playing a game that's kind of rigged against us. <clears throat> it kind of reminds me of playing Candyland with my younger nephews and nieces. Like Candyland should really be called I Win because no matter what card they draw, they wind up jumping way more spots than they're supposed to. Even if I actually win the game, they knock me back to the beginning or put their piece at the end and say I win. And that's kind of what we saw happen with the stock market, right? Like even when the quote unquote little guy wind up beating the hedge funds and the big banks, what do they do? They, they wind up shutting down trading on Robinhood and uh, a lot of other platforms. Um, and, and so in, in a sense, the game is kind of rigged. I kind of thought people might be like, why would I continue to put my money into a, a system and a market that's rigged against me? It's just kind of stupid. So I thought we might see more people kind of pulling money out of the stock market or instead of putting money into the stock market, uh, deciding to possibly invest in crypto, invest in real estate, even though that's kind of scary right now since the eviction moratorium is still going on. It's, I mean, at this point, it's been a year that people, that some landlords haven't been able to collect rent, uh, which is just insane. Uh, you know, I think we're way, way, way overreacting to, to COVID. And and uh, it, it's in, I've complained about this a lot before, but it's insane to me that we expect private citizens to use their private property to provide free housing and charity, essentially, uh, all the while governments do nothing for them and still expect their property taxes. Uh, that's just fucking insane. Um, 
so real estate, I guess, isn't that attractive. I'm actually thinking about selling my rental house. Um, I do want to keep a house here in Illinois, even if I wind up moving to Florida. Uh, so I will wind up keeping one rental house, although my house now is in a little bit of a nicer area. I'm hoping to get a, a better quality of, uh, of tenant. Um, p -p -p we have, man, we're 10 minutes in. We haven't even gotten into the article. I'll have to maybe cruise through this one. So I only got a couple minutes left. Um, bo -bo -bo. Oh, and then I thought maybe we'd see people kind of investing in themselves, investing in their own education, starting businesses instead of putting money into the stock market. So, you know, I've rambled on long enough. We're 10 minutes in. Let's hop on into this article. Um, meet the only ETF in the U.S. that owns Bitcoin. On a corporate scale, adoption of Bitcoin could still very well be in its early innings. This is especially true when you consider the very few corporations that own it and the very few ETFs that have stakes in it. But one ETF has significant exposure to Bitcoin. Kathy Woods Art W not only owns Bitcoin through the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, but it also, of course, owns Tesla, which in turn now owns Bitcoin. As ETF expert Eric uh, Belchunas noted on Monday, ARCW has a 3.7% weighting in the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and a 9.25% weighting in Tesla. Using Monday's closing price, Tesla has about one-tenth of 1% 1 of its market cap in Bitcoin holdings. And here you can see that tweet from uh, Eric Belchunas. Um, but in an investing world where not many ETFs have exposure to Bitcoin, ARCW's holdings in GPTC and Tesla make it a prime ebb and flow along with the price of Bitcoin. Here are ARCW's top holdings. We can see uh, Tesla, uh, Teledec Health, Square Inc., which also holds Bitcoin. They didn't mention that in this article, but Square Inc. Uh, also put, what, $50 million into Bitcoin. Uh, Roku, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, uh, Tessent Holdings, Agora Inc., Spotify Technology, Netflix, and C Limited. Beltunas also noted that ArcW saw record volume on Monday of $413 million, likely as a result of the news of Tesla's $1.5 billion stake in Bitcoin. He notes that ArcW now has three ETFs that are in the top 2% AUM. We recall we noted just a few days ago that ARC uh, now officially has over $50 billion in ETF assets under management, a stunning rise from the just $3.6 billion the fund managed this time last year. Because, hey, $5 trillion rolling off the Fed printing press has to wind up somewhere, right? So far in 2021, investors have poured almost $11 billion into Woods Fund, according to Bloomberg. ARC's fund focuses on ESG investing, EVs, genomics, and fintech. And while Bloomberg notes her eye-popping returns are catching attention, there has been nary a discussion about how the valuation of ARC's underlying EF ETF components have ballooned with the market to all-time highs. Regardless, Todd Rosenbluff, director of ETF research for CFRA Research, said, this is a key milestone and a sign that the ETF business is not just dominated by firms tracking indexes, giving investor focus on long-term thematic investing. There's room for additional growth for ARC and other active managers. Wood is especially popular in South Korea, where she has become something of a celebrity. Social media posts out of the country refer to her as a money tree. As a result, her ARC fund rising 19% already this year, after rising 149% in 2020. And just to give you some context, uh, you know, on a typical year, the market maybe goes up, what, 7%, 10%, maybe 12% on a good year. In 2019, the market was up, what, 30%, 33%, I think the S&P 500. Um, and in 2020, the market was up, uh, I think, 15 to 18%, uh, depending on if you kind of drip your, uh, your dividends back into your investment. And I thought that sounded kind of weird because I thought 2020 was like a way, just from memory, it seemed like a way bigger year of gains than uh, 2019. However, 2019 had some great gains. What you got to factor in is 2020 had a huge crash and then gain. So it was basically negative and then came back positive. And I also think in 2020, it wasn't necessarily the entire S&P 500 that shot up so much as select specific stocks. Um, but, uh, you know, her, her performance killed that uh, in, you know, just recent months as well as uh, 2020. That's insane, 149% in one year. Um, and while Woods Fund saw four straight days without an inflow during last week's GameStop saga, it's most likely they are drawing from the same smart money that hasn't stopped Wood from offering a new line of merchandise in online art store, including t-shirts that read, Stay Innovative. Mohit Bajaj, director of ETFs for Wallach Beth Capital, said performance leads to inflows. All their funds have done very, very well, which led to such huge amounts of money going into them. Investors still believe in the fund manager. 
Recall, we noted at the end of January that short interest in ARK's innovation fund was on the rise as well. Shorts are also piling into the firm's other ETFs, including its 9.4 billion Genomic Revolution ETF and its 5.9 billion ARK Next Generation ETF. We noted at the time, as a reminder, the fund's success in 2020 was largely tied to a parabolic move in Tesla. Uh, Dave Nading of ETF Trends told Bloomberg, you can't expect any shortable asset to have the kind of meteoric, meteoric rise that ARK has had and not attract almost mechanical short selling. There are quite literally hundred, hundreds of traders who have screamed for ETFs that went up X over Y to use as contrarian short indicators. And us, we believe there may be no better example of, in modern history of how central banks have skewed markets from focusing on fundamentals to rewarding whatever trendy cash furnace of a company is popular this week uh, than Woods ETF inflows. So. I don't know that I'm going to invest in this one. I'm going to check it out. Just one other thing. I got, I got to get running here. But one other thing I wanted to mention, Zero Hedge actually predicted like a month or two back that Tesla was going to drop a bunch of money into Bitcoin, and that actually wound up happening. And uh, we'll see if it winds up happening. Zero Hedge actually has a list of companies they anticipate uh, putting a significant portion of their money into Bitcoin, and they're predicting that Apple's going to put in $5 billion into Bitcoin, as well as possibly roll out some type of like Bitcoin or crypto wallet it on the iOS platform, you know, iPhones, computers, uh, um, iPads, all that type of stuff. So let me know your guys' thoughts about everything kind of discussed in this article. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button below, uh, ring the bell, all that good jazz, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.